Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be showing from the Norway Chess Classical Tournament or the Classical Armageddon Tournament as uh, if the Classical game ends in a draw then they play a quick Armageddon game because every uh, round needs, must have a winner. That's how they are playing it uh, and it's been I, I believe the, the, the fourth year that they are using this system. I could be wrong but I think it's four. So it's Fabiano Caruana versus former world classical champion Magnus Carlsen and uh, he uh, chooses a very a very special uh, opening for this game and that is the French defense. So let's see uh, how this plays out. Fabi has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. Uh, pawn to e6, Magnus goes for the French defense, d4, d5, knight to c3, and now knight to f6. And no, that is not the reason I chose this game. Pawn to e5, the Steinitz variation against um, uh, Magnus's classical setup, knight f to d7, and of course pawn to f4. We have pawn to c5 and knight to f3. When you're playing against a player uh, of um, uh, Caruana's caliber, uh, of course you can expect the main line and, uh, the, uh, well, uh, even a few surprises uh, uh, in the middle of the main line line knight to c6 we have bishop to e3 a6 and now knight to e2 and this is sort of the first surprise fabi throws at magnus here the top moves are queen to d2 pawn to a3 bishop to e2 and the knight to d2 which is kind of the fourth most popular option uh, and magnus shows that this is not uh, nothing new to him he knows of course how to play this queen to b6 now puts more pressure on the center and also on the b2 pawn we have queen to c1 now defending the b2 pawn and bishop to e7 at uh, the d for pawn is sufficiently defended so you don't need to worry about that uh, we have c3 and now castles by uh, by magnus we have pawn to g3 and pawn to f6 this is uh, how you play against um, uh, this setup that uh, that fabi has he has a very strong central setup and you want to play f6 and uh, uh, break through that so bishop to g2 c captures on d4 magnus captures once c captures and queen to a5 with check and there is a game that was played some 12 years ago between paco vallejo and uh, henrik daniel and in the 18th European uh, Team Championship that was won by, by uh, Paco Vallejo. Uh, but in that game, uh, uh, Bishop to D2 was played. Here we have Knight back to C3. And it is now as of move 14 that we have a completely new game. So Knight to B6. Magnus now ready to throw that Knight to C4. Uh, e captures on F6. Bishop captures and pawn to B3 now. Stopping Knight to C4. Uh, Bishop to D7 and now just castles. And here, of course, you have to be... Uh, a little bit careful about that knight or the queen is the only piece that's defending it so rook to c8 uh, preparing to add more firepower on that c file and queen to d2 just getting the queen out of that uh, c file you don't want the rook x-raying the queen uh, for too long knight to e2 off uh, sorry bishop to e7 first and now knight to e2 offering a queen trade uh, Fabi, uh, magnus accepts we have captures on d2 bishop captures on d2 and now rook to c7 getting ready to double up on the c file rook a to c1 and now rook f to c8 and fabi finds a very interesting move in the position because it's not easy to push anything here magnus has pretty much everything covered except one thing and that is uh the uh, the, uh the, this diagonal basically he plays f5 and now magnus can't really capture on uh, f5 if he captures then bishop to f4 it traps the rook on c8 so he needs to deal with that he plays bishop to a3 attacks fabi's rook on c1 and now rook c to e1 or you could uh, capture on e6 uh, first and then play rook to e1 uh, he decides to do it uh, this way rook c to e1 uh, bishop to b4 offering a trade of bishops and now fabi trades bishop captures on b4 knight captures on b4 and now f captures on e6 with bishop captures on e6 and knight to f4 fabi goes after the bishop on e6 and now bishop to f5 magnus is even happy that he uh traded his backwards e6 pawn now they're they're both they are both left with an isolated d pawn and it's a pretty equal equal position so here knight to e5 that is now a monster knight so you don't want to uh, leave it there for too long pawn to g6 we have pawn to g4 chasing away the bishop and bishop to e4 bishop captures we have pawn captures and now uh, pawn to a3 chasing away the knight if you're wondering uh do, do you capture the pawn well you could but then you also lose the a2 pawn so first pawn to a3 knight for to d5 uh now 
asking are we ready to capture on e4 and Fabi is. We have rook captures on e4 and now rook to c3 Magnus goes for the pawns with this very active rook. We have knight to d7 uh, and here Magnus has to be very very careful. There, there are but a few uh, moves that Magnus could play here in, uh, in order not to get in trouble too much like rook to c1 is an option. Uh, he could go rook back to c7. He could play rook to d8. Those are all of the options except the move that Magnus played. He played rook capture some b3 and believe it or not uh, uh, this move loses Magnus the game. It's not easy to spot why, and this is a classical game. We are only at move 32. We haven't even uh, discussed any lines because most of it uh, ha has all been played before. This is fairly, uh, fairly uh, irregular stuff, but uh, Magnus already blunders here with rook capture some b3. So now feel free to pause the video and win the game for Fabi uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this incredible idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, look at this. Knight captures on d5. And okay, that's probably one of the first moves that you thought of. Knight captures on d5 and now rook to e5. And uh, remarkable as it is, there is no good way to defend the knight. Uh, the f6 square is covered. This is covered. If you, if you try to defend it, let's say rook to b5, then you run into rook captures on d5. And after, of course, um, uh, rook captures knight to f6 check. Uh, wins uh, even more material. So there's really not all that much you can do here. If you go knight to e3, which is also very nice, then you just run into uh, either checkmate or you lose more material. For example, knight to f6 check. And now if you go to g7, then rook to e7 check, and it's all over. You either go uh, to the f file and then rook captures on e3, followed by knight uh, d5, a discovery capturing the knight, or you go to h6 and then you just get checkmated. Rook h7, king to g5, and pawn to h4 uh, will be checkmate. If you go to f7 right away it's pretty much the same thing you just capture on e3 and that's it you're up a full piece rook captures knight to d5 opens up a discovery the king will move it doesn't really matter where you're going to capture the rook here now you're up a full knight uh, of course completely winning so magnus tried knight to c3 uh, but it doesn't help him all that much fabi just played knight to f6 with check and believe it or not it was in this position on move 35 that magnus carlson resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here absolutely incredible stuff by Fabi. Magnus makes uh, one little mistake uh, and Fabi takes advantage of it. Uh, okay, Magnus was a bit lower on time. He had uh, less than 10 minutes. Fabi had like 20 minutes on the clock, but still uh, very nicely done. It's not uh, not in uh, you know a small feat taking down the former world champion Magnus Carlsen in a classical game uh, as he is, well, pretty much almost 100 rating points higher rated than pretty much every other chess player uh, in the world, uh, you know, except, except those special few. Now here you resign. Okay, may maybe Magnus resigned a bit too early here because you could still put a little bit of um, uh, you know defense but I guess he just wasn't interested uh, to give you an example okay uh, your choices are basically king to g7 or king to f7 now let's uh, discuss what happens if king to g7 then you first play d5 you're going to advance the pawn rook to the rook d7 check is coming there's really no way to stop that and if knight to b5 guarding the d6 square now you go rook to e7 with check king to f8 and now rook uh, if you don't go to f8 then you again get checkmated so uh, rook captures on b7 can be played and if knight to d4 now you'll play knight captures on h7 with check there are just too many discoveries and you can't keep an eye on all of them knight to f6 checking back to f8 now you can even trade rook captures knight captures and pawn to d6 there's no way to stop the pawn uh king to f7 doesn't really matter what you play pawn to d7 rook to d8 now pawn to g5 defends the knight and there is zero counterplay here for uh, uh, for black, there are basically no moves that you can make. You can, you know, horse around with your knight a little bit. Uh, the other idea, after knight to f6 check, you can play king to f7, not king to g7, uh, but it's not much better. Knight to d7 check can be played. King will move, and now pawn to d5. Again, you uh, start advancing your pawn. Uh, black can even trade off some material, but that will only favor white. Let's say rook capture some b1, knight capture some b1, pawn to d6 is coming. Pawn to h6, now rook to e7, cutting off the king from advancing uh, further uh, from, from the back rank, even rook to c1 check, let's say uh, rook to d1, uh, sorry, uh, king to f2, now if rook to d1 going after the pawn, you just deliver a nice check, knight to f6 check, king to f8, 
knight to h7 with check king to g8 pawn to d7 and that's it again not uh, not not a lot to do here for black so there were a few more moves of course magnus could have explored but he decided that okay he knows that he's going to lose this he just doesn't want to uh, look at this position as i'm pretty much uh, sure that he was disgusted with himself as he usually is when he plays a bad game uh, so yeah, uh, there we have it. Fabiano Caruana uh, starting off the uh, the uh, classical portion of the Norway chess with a bang, definitely taking down the former world uh, classical champion. And uh, you can see that, okay, that doesn't mean all that much, but as Fabi did much better than Magnus, he got fourth place in the uh, blitz section uh, and Magnus got seventh place. That means Fabi will get an extra white uh, in the tournament. So uh, again, that, go, that, that can go a long way. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Not a lot to discuss in this game as it was, you know, pretty clean on both sides. Magnus just made a terrible blunder and Fabi, you know, honed in on it like, like a hawk and just um, uh, obliterated Magnus. Uh, so yeah, once again, I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I'd like to thank Marcus Grebel, Buntiak Pang, uh, Ravishing Reptiles YouTube, Michael Sakarias, and David Gasparian for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the classical section of the Norway Chess Tournament uh, until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.